Hello, everyone. I guess I think we can start. So you have anybody that will join, I think you have to turn up. So let me start in the chat. Yep. So uh, it's nice meeting everyone. Good evening, all. Good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Oluwa Femi uh, by name. So I'll be uh, your facilitator for this book club, which is about uh, introduction to statistical learning using R. So I'm so sorry, I can't uh, turn up my camera for now because I am busy. I don't want uh, to distract us as our discussion is uh, going on. So this book is about uh, uh, its introduction to statistical learning using R. And this book was written by Garrett, Garrett James, uh, Daniela uh, Witten, Trevor Asti, and it was published in uh, Springer, okay? So, and uh, what the edition in which uh, we are going through is the second edition of the book, uh, which we'll, we are going through. And the book uh, can be found in the r4ds.io slash ISLR. So once we go to this uh, URL, we can, uh, we can have access to the book. And this website is being developed by the R for Data Science uh, online learning uh, community. So we can join the, the Slack uh, using, uh, we can join using this uh, URL here. But uh, basically in the R for Data Science uh, online learning community, I think uh, there, is, there is a code, there is a code of conduct. Uh, so I'll just quickly go through. So the, like the code of conduct uh, in interest of fostering the open, welcoming environment. We as learners, mentors, and administrators, uh, we pledge to make, make making participation in our community a harassment free experience for everyone, regardless of age, body size, uh, disability, ethnicity, gender, identity, and expression level of experience, nationality, personal experience, race, religion. So there is also our standards, so example of behavior that contribute to creating a positive, positive environment include using welcoming and inclusive, uh, inclusive language. So we need to, we need to embrace each other. So we also be being respectful of different viewpoints and experiences, gracefully accepting constructive criticism, focusing on what is best for the community. We are also going to look at showing empathy towards other community members. We have example of unacceptable behavior by participants include the use of sexual language or imagery on unwelcome sexual attention or, or advances, trolling or insulting derogatory comments or personal uh, political attacks. So we also have look at public or private harassment publishing others' private information, such as a physical or electronic address without explicit uh, permission. We also have our responsibility uh, as members of the community. We have community administrators are responsible for clarifying the standards of acceptable behavior and are expected to take appropriate and fair corrective action in response, in response to any instances of unacceptable behavior. We also have community administrator have the right and responsibility to remove, edit, or reject comments, question and answers, permit code, wiki edits, issues, and other contributions. So we also have scope enforcement. So because of time, so I will not have time. So I can just quickly post this uh, code of conduct in the in the in the chat so that someone can also look at it. So the, that is a code of conduct uh, for they are for data science online uh, learning community. So the next, uh, so the next is about the book club meeting. So like uh, how we plan is that each week, a volunteer will present a chapter from the book or part of a chapter. And, and it's been recommended that we try as much as possible to present a chapter because it's the best way uh, in which we are going to learn the material because once we present, we will definitely we are going to have time to go through the material. Then we come and make a presentation whereby we discuss about certain things in the chapter so that so that we can further uh, 
or learn together in a group. Presentation will usually consist of a review of the material, a discussion, a demonstration of principles presented uh, in the chapter. So more information about to present is available on this GitHub repo. So I'll quickly open the repo so, so that we just look at it. Uh, so once I go there, so for us to present, so I guess uh, I think uh, everyone is all familiar uh, with the use of Git. So because it's mainly what we use for version control. So uh, how we are going to present the book. So they said, how to present okay so first of all we need to we we, uh, we need to clone we need to clone uh this report to our machine using this function which is going to download the whole book to your computer then we open our new project then we use use this pr init to initiate a pull request so here we put in the name of the chapter that we are, we want to we want to create our pull our new like maybe for chapter one, we can just put here is chapter one. So we need to install all the, the uh, dependent uh, package in which uh, using this function, install dev dependency. Then we need to we need to add any packages in which we'll be using in that section using this function. Then uh, then we push this pull request. Then John once John see this pull request is going to review this pull request, then he's going to merge it back uh, to the to the GitHub uh, repository. So that is basically a brief rundown of how we can really edit. So we can see that there, there is all the recording, all our presentation um, is going to be recorded and the recording is going to be made available in this YouTube channel. So it's going to be uploaded in, uh, they are for data science uh, YouTube channel. So like I said, basically the book, uh, we have the first edition of the book. We also have the second edition of the book, but uh, what we are going through uh, is the second edition of the book, which is what we are going through. So like for the pace in which we'll be using for this book, this book is, is often used for, is a two semester long course in the universities, there is a is a two semester long course in which we are going to be presenting each chapter. Uh, we plan to go through each chapter in two weeks. So, like the first week, uh, we are going to present uh, the theory about the chapter. So, like the second week is where we we do the labs. So the labs. So is where we do the labs. The labs. The there's uh, we have freedom to either use a uh, base R or you go through the tidy model, but when we check through the GitHub repo, which I will show us before we finish our discussion, there is there are some pin resources there in the GitHub repository in the Slack. So it is okay to split chapter when we feel it is too much. We also try to meet every week, uh, but we will likely take some breaks, like for holidays, like the Christmas and New Year. So we'll take a break, then we we'll resume uh, again uh, next year. So like uh, before I go into the introduction of the chapter, so maybe uh, we'll just quickly uh, do uh, a brief introduction where, where I think I will first of all start uh, with a brief introduction before we look at uh, the chapter one of the chapter. So good evening uh, uh, all. Uh, my name is uh, Oluwa Femi uh, Oyedele. I'm a Nigerian. Uh, currently I am a research assistant here at the International Institute of, of Tropical Agriculture in Ibadan. I'm also a prospective uh, PhD student uh, at the University of Kassel in Germany. So I really want to, I have to have participated in several book club. Uh, we just finished reading the tidy model in R. I've also, I've also participated in the Advanced R Book Club. I'm also in Mastering Shiny. I'm currently facilitating the ggplot 2 uh, Book Club. So I think uh, it's nice missing you all. So I don't know who is next. So I'll pass them to Connor Tompkin. Hi there. Um, my name is Connor Tompkins. I'm a data scientist in uh, supply chain. Um, I'm based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the U.S.
I'll go next. <clears throat> My name's Nathan. Um, I'm a data analyst at the uh, Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Okay, I'll take the next one. I'm uh, still the first year graduate student in data science in the currently located in the Gainesville in Florida and the student of the University of Florida. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to this book up because uh, I'm kind of new to the statistical learning and I want to share, I want to gain a lot of experience and knowledge from this club. Thank you very much. Hey everyone, my name is Omer Durrani and I am a junior data scientist at Versage Group. I'm located in Windsor, Ontario in Canada. No problem, thank you all uh, for that. So I will just quickly run through the introduction of the book. So uh, so in the introduction for the chapter one, so what we are going to, for the learning objective, so what we have, we are going to learn how to recognize various types of uh, statistical learning. So we are also going to understand why this book is useful for you. So also be able to read mathematical uh, notation used throughout this book, describe the overall layouts of this book, and be able to find data used in example throughout uh, the book. So th that is just uh, basically what uh, we are going to go through uh, for today. So just feel free to interrupt me at any point uh, uh, when I say so anything that is not clear so that I can easily come back to it. So, so the book kind of like said, uh, what is uh, statistical learning? So. It said that statistical learning is a theoretical foundation for machine learning framework. It makes connection between fields of statistics and functional analysis because when we are looking at uh, statistical learning, so there are there are two things that is going to come into our mind. First, one in one angle we have our supervised learning. In another angle, we have our own supervised learning. So those. Those are the two things, uh, like for the supervised learning, we are we are going to learn how we are going to build a model to predict an output from inputs, because uh, we are, example there we have the wage, we want to be able to what predict wage using the both age, education, and also the year, or we want to what predict market direction from previous days uh, performance. So, and we label all this as what supervised uh, learning. Then when we go to the, uh, looking at the unsupervised learning, we have inputs, but no specific outputs. So there, what, what are we trying to learn there? We are trying to learn, uh, we, we say, yeah, this is the data, let the model just go and learn the pattern. So in this case, uh, we are trying to identify what clusters, uh, example, we're trying to identify cluster within cancer cell lines. So, so such kind of data, we know that it's gonna be uh, on supervised uh, learning. So, so in the next part, uh, let me just quickly go. So they kind of say that, why do we need introduction to statistical learning using R? First of all, that they led over to understand that this, we really need introduction to statistical learning uh, using R because this helps us to what facilitate the transition of statistical learning from academic to a mainstream field. So we are going to see how we can move from academic to mainstream field. That is how we can apply this to real world data sets. Okay, our machine learning is useful to everyone, which lets us all to learn enough to use it uh, responsibly. So the R labs makes this, uh, makes the, uh, make sense for this community because in each chapter there is going to be labs so let me quickly switch to slack so let me share i don't know am i sharing my slack yeah okay so if we look at this there are some pin we can see they lead a discussion so this like is like a sign up sheet where we are going to come to sign up so you can see official this is the lab study model lab so there is a tidy model lab. There is also a solution. So we can, this is used, if you are familiar with tidy models, so this is where we are going to be using. These are all the labs. These are some solutions. Uh, this is uh, this is the book. This is the official YouTube course for about uh, about the book where we can learn more 
about the book, but I will still come back to this before the end of uh, my presentation. So, so 1.3, they talk about premises of introduction to statistical learning using R. So if you look at from page nine of the introduction, okay, they said that many statistical learning methods are relevant and useful in a wide range of academic and non-academic uh, disciplines beyond just statistical sciences. So they said that statistical learning should not be viewed as a series of black boxes because we can, we need to you, pick what, the idea in which we are learning, we need to be able to apply it to solve actual real world problems. So if we are able to apply it, then we know that uh, we have been able to put this into practice. So why it is important to know what job is performed by each core. It is not necessary to have the skills to construct the machine inside the box. We presume that the reader is interested in applying statistical learning methods to real world uh, problems. So the, that is the main idea. They believe that, yeah, they are, what we are learning, going through this book, we should be able to apply it to solve uh, real world uh, problems. So I don't know if uh, there is any comments or question before we proceed. Okay. So some kind of notations that we'll find when going through this book. So when we find something like N, so we know that this stands for number of observations, which might be rows. So when we have something like P in the book, is actually the main number of futures or variables, which are columns. We will come back to the back here if we need so as we go. So some symbols we assume we know is this epsilon symbol, which is element of in. So maybe we want to say this can be found is an element that can be found in this. So when we see this, so is actually an element of in when we have this symbol. It's actually stands for real numbers. So we need to get ourselves uh, familiar uh, with this symbol because it's going to help us as we go walk through uh, this book. So what have we gotten ourselves into? Yes, we are we are in we are going through introduction to statistical learning uh, that is written by this author. It's a collection of modern statistical method for modeling and making prediction of real world data. It is a middle way between theoretical statistics and practical practice of applying statistics uh, to real world problems. It can be considered as a user manual with a self-contained R labs, which leads you through the use of different methods for applying statistical analysis to different kinds of data. So we have two, we have terminology and main concepts, Three to four, we have classic linear methods. Chapter five, we look at resampling, so we can choose the best method. Chapter six, we look at modern updates to linear methods. Then chapter seven and, and moving forward, we look at beyond linearity. We can worry about details as we get there. Okay, so what again, so we have, so yeah, we need to learn where do we get our data. So the data in which we are will be using throughout this book uh, is coming from this R package, which is the ISLR2 package. So which we need to first of all, we need to first of all install the package in order for us to have assets, access uh, to the data set in which we'll be using throughout our discussion. So the next step is that for us to install the book on our machine. So we are Using first of all, we need to install the remote package because the book is uh, a station in GitHub. So we need to use the, the install underscore GitHub function that is coming from the remote package. So we call the R for data science, then book club ISLR. Okay. So we we need to install the book. So then we need to what remove uh, the book. Okay. So because we we just we will, we will look at this data in more details uh, below. So like uh, this book has uh, some useful resources uh, where we'll be using. So like the book, the book page, so which is uh, gotten in this website, which I can open in this 
I can open the website. So this is the book page. Okay. This is a website for the book. You can see the, an introduction to state school learning. Okay. Okay. Download ISLR with R, download ISLR with Python. So there are two versions. So we have the R edition. We also have the Python edition. So I, I think I saw um I did not mention it. I'm also going walking going through the Python edition of this book. I'm also in the book club uh, where we are going through uh, the Python version of this. So you know, this is the R version which we are going through. There is also another version uh, for Python. So when we come through this book, we can see we have the home tab here. Okay, we we also have some resources, online courses about the book. This is the for the first edition. This is the second edition of the book. This is for the this is the Python edition. So we also have some resources. First edition, second edition. We also have some reviews. And the book also have a online forum because maybe you might be going through the book. There might be something in which you are trying, some problem in which uh, you want to solve, maybe something that is not clear. You can come to the forum of the book. Then you can post a question on the forum. Then you can ask question there. Somebody might uh, be answer, might pick it up there and answer the question. So like for the PDF version of the book, uh, it can be found in this website. So let me post it uh, on this on the charts. I think if you go through this website, uh, you get uh, you get a PDF uh, version of the book. So there is also a course on edX which is on statistical learning. So this is the YouTube playlist for the book. Uh, this is exercise solutions. So these are solutions uh, for the book. So these are the exercise solution, which I can open it in a new tab. So that I check, uh, this is X, these are the solution for chapter two, chapter three, and up to chapter 10. But there are some of them that are, they have already pinned some of them in the Slack, so which I will show us before the end of my uh, presentation. So this is the book, I said R2. Uh, some more theoretical resources. So there is also a very good book, which is the element of statistical learning. So, okay, which we can also uh, use as a companion while we are, while we are going uh, through this book. So there is also what is covered in the book. So like the first edition of include the first edition of the book in, include this topic, which is past method for classification. We also look at regression. We look at decision trees. We look at boosting trees. We look at support vector machine. We also look at clustering. Why the second edition, they, they are some new addition. We look at deep learning, survival analysis, multiple testing, the naive Bayes and generalized linear models. We have Bayesian additive regression trees matrix uh, completion. So what again? So how is the book divided? So that the book uh, the book is divided into 13 chapters covering first introduction and statistical learning. We also have supervised versus unsupervised learning. We have regression versus classification problem. We have linear statistical learning. We have linear regression. We have basic concept. Introduction to K nearest neighbor classifier. We have classification. Here we look at logistic regression. We look at linear discriminant analysis. We look at resampling methods. The resampling method will consider cross validation. We look at bootstrap. We look at linear model selection and regularization. We look at stepwise selection, rich regression, principal component regression. We look at lasso. The lasso, we have nonlinear statistical learning. Uh, here we look at moving beyond linearity, polynomial regression, regression spline, smoothing spline, local regression, generalized additive model, tree-based method, decision tree, bagging random forest, boost, boosting variation additive regression trees, support vector machine. We have linear and nonlinear classification. We have deep learning, which is nonlinear regression and classification. We also look at survival analysis and sensor data. We are, we are also going to look at unsupervised learning. We look at principal component analysis, k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, 
multiple testing. Each chapter includes one self-contained outlap on the topics we will cover because each chapter, like we go to chapter two, we need to have the first week we look at the theories, the theoretical part. The second week, then we look at the lab. So they talk about some examples of the problem addressed with the statistical analysis. We are going to identify the risk factor for some types of cancers, predict whether someone will have a, a heart attack on the basis of demographic diets and clinical measurement. We look at email spam detections. We are also going to establish the relationship between salary and demographic variable in population survey data. So the data set provided in the ISLR2 package. Okay, so these are these are just the data sets in which we'll be working with. We have the auto, bike share, Boston, brain cancer, caravan, so down to weekly. So these are some kind of example data sets. We have this is the wage. Okay, so we so in the in the wage data sets. So here we want to be able to predict wage using the the employee's age. So here we are looking at how to predict wage using uh, the various years. So here we want to see how we can predict wage from using the education level. So when we combine those plots, so we have our wage in the y-axis, uh, we have the age in the x-axis, the, the blue line there, which is the mean value. So we can see that that after about after about 60 years okay we can see a decline uh uh decline in wage the as the age the wage decline after about if the wage keep on increasing to around 60 years then after 60 years we can see a decline in wage so here yeah, we can see a slight increase in wage over from between 2004 down to around 2009 so we can see a slight increase. Here we can see in the pattern that, that the wage, the wage increases based on the education level, because we can see that the highest education level here, which is the PhD degree, that we have highest amount of wage. So as our as how the education level increases, so that is how uh, the wage is expected to also uh, go up. So this is. Uh, this is just trying to look at the direction, lag one, lag two. Uh, we can see. Uh, so this one, what are we trying to do here? We are trying to see, look at some uh, gene expression data. So we can see that here, when we look at the class of this data, that is a list. This is a very big data set. So when we look at the names, okay, it's data and also labs. So we can look at all the labs. So these are all what we have as a label. So we can visualize this uh, using uh, a cluster. So we, where we can see that there are different clusters uh, in these uh, data sets. So, so that is just uh, basically a run walkthrough uh, in this uh, first chapter. So like uh, if I go back uh, to my Slack, there are some things. So this, as I was saying, this is the YouTube channel for the course on the introduction to statistical learning. So they have, they also have labs. This is tidy model. If you if you are very much familiar using tidy model, using the tidy vest, I think you will want to um, use a tidy model maybe in your own, when you are working through your own lab. But there are some also solutions here which they implemented is uh, uh, using the base R approach. So like uh, for there is a sign up sheets here that is being pinned in the Slack. So maybe what you will do here, uh, next week chapter is we're talking about uh, the theory of statistical learning. So maybe if you're interested, you can just put your name there. Then the, the week after that, which is 18 of December, we, we are going to go do a walkthrough through the labs. So I think uh, that is all I got. So let me, would stop in the chat. So I don't know if there is any question. So I don't know who is going to lead us through our discussion next week. Do we have any volunteer for next week? Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, thank you very much. So maybe you can sign up. Mm -hmm.